Okay. Um, last, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, in 2021, the Wall Street Journal reported on internal meta research documents asking, why do we care about tweens? These were internal documents. I'm quoting the documents. And answering its own question by citing meta internal emails. They are a valuable but untapped audience. At a commerce hearing, I'm also on that committee, I asked Meta's head of global safety why children aged 10 to 12 are so valuable to Meta. She responded, we do not knowingly attempt to recruit people who aren't old enough to use our apps. Well, when the 42 state attorneys general, Democrat and Republican, um, brought their case, uh, they said this statement was inaccurate. Few examples. In 2021, she received an email, Ms. Davis, uh, from Instagram's research director saying that Instagram is investing in experiencing targeting young age roughly 10 to 12. In a February 2021 instant message, one of your employees wrote that Meta is working to recruit Gen Alpha before they reach teenage years. A 2018 email that circulated inside Meta says that you were briefed that children under 13 will be critical for increasing the rate of acquisition when users turn 13. Explain that with what I heard at that testimony at the Commerce hearing, that they weren't being targeted. And I just ask again, as the other witnesses were asked, why your company does not support the Stop CSAM Act or the SHIELD Act? Sure, Senator, I'm happy to talk to, to both of those. We had discussions internally about whether we should build a kids version of Instagram, like the kids versions that. of YouTube yep. and other services. Um, we haven't actually moved forward with that, and we currently have no plans to do so. So I, I, I can't speak directly to the exact emails that you, that you cited, but it sounds to me like they were deliberations around a project that people internally thought was important and we didn't end up moving forward with. Okay, but, have, and the, the bills, what yeah. are you going to say about so, the two bills? Sure, so the, overall, I mean, my position on the bills is I, I agree with the, the – the goal of all of them. There are most things that I agree with within them. There are specific things that I would probably do differently. We also have um, our own legislative proposal for what we think would be most effective in, in terms of helping the, the internet um, in, in the various companies uh, give parents control over the experience. Um, so I'm happy to go into the detail on any one of them, but ultimately, I mean, I think I, that this I just, is... Again, well, I think these parents will tell you that, that this stuff hasn't worked <laughs> to just give parents control. They don't know what to do. It's very, very hard, and that's why we are coming up with other solutions that we think are much more helpful to law enforcement, but also this idea of finally getting something going on liability, because I just believe with all the resources you have uh, that you actually would be able to do more than you're doing. Are these parents would be sitting behind you right now in this Senate hearing room. Thank you, Senator, Senator Corbett, can I, Senator can I speak Cor to that? Or, or do you want me to come yeah. back later? Yeah. Please, go ahead. I don't think that parents should have to upload an ID or prove that they're the parent of a, of a child in every single app that their children use. I think the right place to do this, and a place where it would be actually very easy for it to work, is within the app stores themselves, where my understanding is Apple and Google already or at least Apple, already requires parental consent when a child does a payment with an app. So it should be pretty trivial to pass a law that requires them uh, to make it so that parents have control any time a child downloads an app um, and, and, and offers consent of that. Um, and, and the research that we've, that we've done shows that the vast majority of parents want that. Um, and I think that that's the type of, of, of uh, legislation, in addition to some of the other ideas that you all have, yeah. that would make this a lot easier yeah. for parents. I just, just to be clear, I remember one mom telling me, with all these things she could maybe do that she can't figure out, it's like a faucet overflowing in a sink, and she's out there with a mop while her kids are getting addicted to more and more different apps and being exposed to material. We've got to make this simpler for parents so they can protect their kids, and I just don't think this is going to be the way to do it. I think the answer is what Senator Graham has been talking about, which is opening up the halls of the courtroom um, so that puts it on you guys to protect these parents and protect these kids, and then also to pass some of these laws that makes it easier for law enforcement. Thank you, Senator Klobuchar. Uh, we're going to try to stick to the seven. Social media is a very powerful tool, but we're here because 
every parent I know, and I think every parent in America, is terrified about the garbage that is directed at our kids. I have two teenagers at home, and the phones they have are portals to predators, to viciousness, to bullying, to self-harm. And each of your companies could do a lot more to prevent it. Mr. Zuckerberg, in June of 2023, the Wall Street Journal reported that Instagram's recommendation systems were actively connecting pedophiles to accounts that were advertising the sale of child sexual abuse material. In many cases, those accounts appeared to be run by underage children themselves, often using code words and emojis to advertise illicit material. In other cases, the accounts included indicia that the victim was being sex trafficked. Now, I know that Instagram has a team that works to prevent the abuse and exploitation of children online. But what was particularly concerning about the Wall Street Journal expose was the degree to which Instagram's own algorithm was promoting the discoverability of victims for pedophiles seeking child abuse material. In other words, this material wasn't just living on the dark corners of Instagram. Instagram was helping pedophiles find it by promoting graphic hashtags including hashtag ped whore and hashtag preteen sex to potential buyers. Instagram also displayed the following warning screen to individuals who were searching for child abuse material. The, these results may contain images of child sexual abuse. And then you gave users two choices get resources, or see results anyway. Mr. Zuckerberg, what the hell were you thinking? All right, Senator. Um, the, the, the basic science behind that is that when people are searching for something that is problematic, it's often helpful to, rather than just blocking it, to help direct them towards something that, um, that could be helpful for getting them to get help. In what, I also, understand get resources. In what sane universe is there a link for C results anyway? Well, because we might be wrong. We, we try to trigger this, this uh, warning, or we tried to, um, when we think that there's any chance that the results Okay, you might, might be, be wrong. Let me ask you, how many times was this warning screen displayed? I don't know, but the... But the hey, you don't know. Why don't you know? I, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. But well, the, You know what, Mr. Zuckerberg? It's interesting you say you don't know it off the top of your head because I asked it in June of 2023 in an oversight letter and your company refused to answer. Will you commit right now to within five days answering this question for this committee? We'll follow up on that. Is that a yes? Not a will follow up. I know how lawyers write statements saying we're not going to answer. Will you tell us how many times this warning screen was displayed? Yes or no? Senator, I'll personally look into it. I'm not sure if we have. Okay, so you're refusing to answer that. Let me ask you this. How many times did an Instagram user who got this warning that you're seeing images of child sexual abuse, how many times did that user click on see results anyway? I want to see that. Senator, I'm not sure if we stored that, but I'll personally look into this and we'll follow up after. And what follow-up did Instagram do when you have a potential pedophile clicking on, I'd like to see child porn? What did you do next when that happened? Senator, I think that an important piece of context here is that any context that we think is child sexual Mr. Zuckerberg, abuse, that's called a question. What did you do next when someone clicked... You may be getting child sexual abuse images, and they click see results anyway. What was your next step? You said you might be wrong. Did anyone examine? Was it, in fact, child sexual abuse material? Did anyone report that user? Did anyone go and try to protect that child? What did you do next? Senator, we take down anything that we think is sexual abuse material on the service, and we do Did, did anyone verify to... whether it was, in fact, child sexual abuse material? 
Senator, I don't know if, if every single search result we're following up on, but in, did, did but you report the board, to people who wanted it? Senator, do you want me to answer your question? Yeah, I want you to answer the question I'm asking. Did you report time to speak the people then? who click see results anyway? Uh, that's probably one of the factors that we use in reporting. And in general, I mean, we've reported more people and done more reports like this to NCMEC, the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children, than any other company in the industry. We proactively go out of our way across our services to do this and have made, I think it's more than 26 million reports, which is more than the whole rest of the industry combined. So Mr. Zuckerberg, the, the, the Mr. Zuckerberg that, that we, your that we company and seriously. every social media company needs to do much more to protect children. All right, Mr. Chu, in the next couple of minutes. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Zuckerberg. Blumenthal, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I know both of them. <laughs> that was good enough. Mr. Zuckerberg, uh, you know who Antigone Davis is, correct? Yes. She's one of your top leaders. In September of 2021, she was global head of safety, correct? Yes. And you know that she came before a subcommittee of the Commerce Committee that I chaired at the time, Subcommittee on Consumer Protection, correct? Yes. And she was testifying on behalf of Facebook, right? Meta, but yes. It was then Facebook, but Meta now. And she told us, and I'm quoting, Facebook is committed to building better products for young people and to doing everything we can to protect their privacy, safety, and well-being on our platforms. And she also said kids' safety is an area where, quote, we are investing heavily, end quote. We now know that statement was untrue. We know it from an internal email that we have received. It's an email written by Nick Clegg. You know who he is, correct? Yes. He was Meta's president of global affairs. And he wrote a memo to you, which you received, correct? Uh, it was written to you. So I, can't, I can't see the email, but sure, I'll assume that, that you got it that correct. And he summarized Facebook's problems. He said, quote, we are not on track to succeed for our core well-being topics. Problematic use, bullying and harassment, connections, and SSI, meaning suicidal self-injury. He said also in a, another memo, quote, we need to do more and we are being held back by a lack of investment. This memo has the date of August 28th, just weeks before that testimony from Antigone Davis, correct? Sir, Senator, I'm not sure what the date of the testimony was. Well, those are the dates on the emails. Nick Clegg was asking you, pleading with you for resources to back up the narrative, to fulfill the commitments. In effect, Antigone Davis was making promises that Nick Clegg was trying to fulfill, and you rejected that request for 45 to 84 engineers to do well-being or safety. We know that you rejected it from another memo, Nick Clegg's assistant, Tim Colburn, who said, Nick did email Mark, referring to that earlier email, to emphasize his support for the package, but it lost out to the various other pressures and priorities. We've done a calculation that those potentially 84 engineers would have cost Meta about $50 million in a quarter when it earned $9.2 billion. And yet it failed to make that commitment in real terms and you rejected that request because of other pressures and priorities. That is an example from your own internal document 
of failing to act, and it is the reason why we can no longer trust Meta and, frankly, any of the other social media to, in effect, grade their own homework. The public, and particularly the parents in this room, know that we can no longer rely on social media to provide the kind of safeguards that children and parents deserve. And that is the reason why passing the Kids Online Safety Act is so critically important. Mr. Zuckerberg, do you believe that you have a constitutional right to lie to Congress? Senator, no, but I, I mean, you, well, you let just me just clarify for you. I mean, I'd like in, the, the opportunity let to, me just to respond clarify to for you. you. In a lawsuit brought by hundreds of parents, some in this very room, alleging that you made false and misleading statements concerning the safety of your platform for children, you argued in not just one pleading, but twice, in December and then in January, that you have a constitutional right to lie to Congress. Do you disavow that filing in court? Senator, I don't know what filing you're talking about, but I testified honestly from and truthfully, and I, I would like the, the opportunity to respond to the previous things that you showed as well. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Mr. Spiegel, I see you hiding down there. What does yada, yada, yada mean? I'm not familiar with the term, Senator. Very uncool. Can we agree that what you do, not what you say, what you do is what you believe and everything else is just cottage cheese? Yes, Senator. You agree with that? Speak up. Don't be shy. I, I, I've listened... To, to you today. I've heard a lot of yada, yada, yada. -ing. And I've heard you talk about the reforms you've made. And I appreciate them. And I've heard you talk about the reforms you're going to make. But I don't think you're going to solve the problem. I think Congress is going to have to help you. I think the reforms you're talking about to some extent are going to be like putting putting paint on rotten wood. And I'm not sure you're going to support this legislation. I'm not. Um, the, the fact is that you and some of your Internet colleagues who are not here are no longer, you're, you're not companies, you're countries. You're, you're very, very powerful. And you and some of your colleagues who are not here have blocked everything we have tried to do in terms of reasonable regulation, everything from privacy to child exploitation. And um, in fact, we, we have a new definition of recession. Um, a recession is when, we know we're in a recession when Google has to lay off 25 members of Congress. That's what we're down to. We're also down to this fact that your platforms are hurting children. I'm not saying they're not doing some good things, but they're hurting children. And I know how to count votes, and if this bill comes to the floor of the United States Senate, it will pass. What we're going to have to do, and I say this with all the respect I can muster, is convince my good friend Senator Schumer to to go to Amazon, buy a spine online, and bring this bill to the Senate floor. And uh, the House will then pass it. Now, that's, that's one person's opinion. I may be wrong, but I doubt it. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, let me ask you a couple of questions. Let's, I might wax a little philosophical here. Um, I have to hand it to you. Uh, you, you have um, 
you have convinced over 2 billion people to give up all of their personal information, every bit of it, in exchange for getting to see what their high school friends had for dinner Saturday night. That's pretty much your business model, isn't it? It's not how I would characterize it. I and mean, we give people the ability to connect with the people they care about and, um, and to engage with the topics that they care about. And you, and you take this information, this abundance of personal information, and then you develop algorithms to punch people's hot buttons which, and, send, and, and, and steer to them information that punches their hot buttons again and again and again to keep them coming back and to keep them staying longer. And as a result, your users see only one side of an issue. And so, to some extent, your platform has become a killing field for the truth, hasn't it? I mean, Senator, I disagree with that, that characterization. Um, you know, we build ranking and recommendations because people have a lot of friends and a lot of interests and they want to make sure that they see the content that's relevant to them. Um, we're trying to make a product that's useful to people and, and make our services um, as helpful as possible for people to connect with the people they but, care about and the interests they care about. But and you don't show do. them both sides. You don't give them balanced information. You just keep punching their hot buttons, punching their hot buttons. You don't show them balanced information so people can discern the truth for themselves. And, and you rev them up so much that, that so often your platform and others becomes just cesspools of snark where nobody learns anything, don't they? Well, Senator, I disagree with that. I think people can engage in the things that they're interested in um, and learn quite a bit about those. We have done a, a handful of different experiments and things in the past around news and trying to show content on you know, a diverse set of, of, of perspectives. I think that there's more that needs to be explored there, but I don't think that we can solve that by ourselves. One do, of the things do, that do I you saw- think, I'm sorry to cut you off, Mr. Mr. President, but I'm gonna run out of time. Do, do you think your users really understand what they're giving to you, all of their personal information, and how you, how you process it and how you monetize it. Do you think people really understand? Uh, Senator, I think people understand the basic terms. I mean, I, I think that there's... Let, that, that, let me put I, it I actually in, think that a lot of people let me put it another way. We, we spent a couple of years have. since we talked about this. Does your user agreement still suck? I, I'm, can, I'm not sure you, how to answer that, Senator. Can, can, you, I, still I hide a, can I, you still hide a dead body in all that legalese where nobody can find it? Senator, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you're referring to, but I think people get the basic deal of using these services. It's a free service. You're using it to connect with the people you care about. If you share something with people, other people will be able to see your information. It's, it's inherently, you know, if you're putting something out there to be shared publicly um, or with a private set of people, it's, you know, you're inherently putting it out there. So I, I think people get that basic I, but, part but, of how this works. But Mr. Zuckerberg, works. you're in the foothills of creepy. You, you, track, you, track, you track people who aren't even Facebook users. You track your own people your own users who are your product, even, even when they're not on Facebook. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to land this plane pretty quickly, Mr. Chairman. I, I, just, I mean, it's creepy. And I understand you make a lot of money doing it, but I just wonder if, if our technology is greater than our humanity. I mean, let me ask you this final question. Instagram is harmful to young people, isn't it? Senator, I disagree with that. That's not what the research shows on balance. That doesn't mean that individual people don't have issues and that there aren't things that, that we need to do to, to help provide the right tools for people. But across all of the research that we've done internally, I mean, this, this, the uh, you know, survey that uh, the Senator previously cited, um, you know, there are, 12 or 15 different categories of harm that we asked um, teens if they felt that Instagram made it worse or better. 
and across all of them, except for the one that 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 um, that Senator Hawley cited, um, more people said that using Instagram I, made the issues this that they point, face Mr. Zuckerberg. either positive or. Uh, let me. We just have to agree to disagree. If if you believe that Instagram, I know it's. I'm not saying it's intentional, but if you agree that Instagram, if you think that Instagram is not hurting millions of our young people, particularly young teens, particularly young women, you shouldn't be driving. It is. Thanks. Senator Butler. Senator from Tennessee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for, to each of you for coming, and I know some of you had to be subpoenaed to get here, uh, but we do appreciate that you all are here. Mr. Chu, I want to come to you first. Uh, we've heard that you're looking at putting a headquarters in Nashville, and likewise in Silicon Valley and Seattle, and what you're going to find probably is that the welcome mat is not going to be rolled out for you in Nashville like it would be in California. There are a lot of people in Tennessee that are very concerned about the way TikTok is basically building dossiers on our kids, the way they are building those on their virtual you, and also that that information is held in China, in Beijing, as you responded to Senator Blumenthal and I last year in reference to that question. And we also know that a major music label yesterday said they were pulling all of their content off your site because of your issues on payment, on artificial intelligence, and because of the negative impact on our kids' mental health. So we will see how that progresses. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, I want to come to you. Uh, we have just had Senator Blumenthal and I, of course, have had some internal documents and emails that have come our way. One of the things that really concerned me is that you referred to your young users in terms of their lifetime value of being roughly $270 per teenager. And each of you should be looking at these kids. Their T-shirts they're wearing to say, today say, I'm worth more than $270. We've got some standing up in those T-shirts. Now, and some of the children from our state, some of the children, the parents that we have worked with, just to think whether it is Becca Schmidt, David Mollock, Sarah Flatt, and Lee Schott, would you say that life is only worth $270? What could possibly lead you? I mean, I listened to that. I know you're a dad. I'm a mom. I'm a grandmom. And how could you possibly even have that thought? It is astounding to me. And I think this is one of the reasons that... Um, States, 42 states are now suing you because of features that they consider to be addictive that you are pushing forward. And in the emails that we've got from 2021 that go from August to November, there is the staff plan that is being discussed in Antigone Davis, Nick Clegg, Cheryl Sandberg, Chris Cox, Alex Schultz, Adam Masseri, are all on this chain of emails on the well-being plan. And then we get to one, Nick did email Mark for emphasis, to emphasize his support for the package, but it sounds like it lost out to various other pressures and priorities. See, this is what bothers us. Children are not your priority. Children are your product. Children, you see, as a way to make money. And children, protecting children in this virtual space, you made a conscious decision. Even though Nick Clegg and others were going through the process 
of saying this is what we do. The, these documents are really illuminating. And it just shows me that growing this business, expanding your revenue, what you were going to put on those quarterly filings, that was the priority. The children were not. It's very clear. Um, I want to talk with you about the pedophile ring because that came up earlier and the Wall Street Journal reported on that. And one of the things that we found out was after that became evident, then th you didn't take that content down. And it was content that showed that teens were for sale and were offering themselves to older men. And you didn't take it down because it didn't violate your community standards. Do you know how often a child is bought or sold for sex in this country? Every two minutes. Every two minutes a child is bought or sold for sex. That's not my stat. That is a TBI stat. Now, finally, this content was taken down after a congressional staffer went to Meta's global head of safety. So would you please explain to me and to all these parents why explicit predatory content does not violate your platform's terms of service or your community standards? Sure, Senator. Let me try to address all of the things that you just said. It does violate our standards. We work very hard to take it down. Didn't take it down. We've re well, we've reported, I think it's more than 26 million examples of this kind of content. Didn't take it down until a congressional staffer brought it, it up. It, it may be that in this case we made a mistake and missed something. I but think we you have, make a lot of mistakes. But we have, so let's we have move leading on. teams that I want to talk more than with you about your Instagram creators program and about the push we found out through these documents that you actually are pushing forward because you want to bring kids in early. You see these younger teenagers as valuable but an untapped audience, quoting from the emails, and suggesting teens are actually household influencers to bring their younger siblings into your platform, into Instagram. Now, how can you ensure that Instagram creators, your product, your program, does not facilitate illegal activities when you fail to remove content pertaining to the sale of minors? And it is happening once every two minutes in this country. Um. Senator, our, our tools for identifying that kind of content are industry leading. That doesn't mean we're perfect. There are definitely issues that we have, but we continue Mr. to invest Zuckerberg, a ton in it. I yes, think, there are I, a lot that is slipping through. It appears that you're trying to be the premier sex trafficking no, of site. Of course not, Senator. In this uh, country. Senator, that's ridiculous. No, uh, it Senator, is not ridiculous. Uh, you want to turn around and tell these people that- We don't want this content that, on our platforms. And we, why don't you take it down? We do take we it down. We are here discussing. We, we, do we more need work you to take all to than, work than, with than, us. Than, no, than, you're not. You are not. And the problem is we've been working on this. Senator Welch is over there. We've been working on this stuff for a decade. You have an army of lawyers and lobbyists that have fought us on this every step of the way. You work with NetChoice, the Cato Institute, Taxpayers Protection Alliance, and Chamber of Progress to actually fight our bipartisan legislation to keep kids safe online. So are you going to stop funding these groups? Are you going to stop lobbying against this and come to the table and work with us? Yes or no? Senator, we have a... Yes a, or no? Of course we'll work with you on, on the legislation. Okay, I mean, the it's, door it's is to... open. We've got all these bills. You need, you need to come to the table. Each and every one of you need to come to the table. And you need to work with us. Kids are dying. Senator Welch. Uh, um, I want to thank you to keep our children safe. Mr. Zuckerberg, I want to come back to you. I um, talked with you about being a, a parent to a young child um, who doesn't have a phone, doesn't, you know, is not on 
social media at all. Um, and one of the things that I am deeply concerned with uh, as uh, a parent to a young black girl is the utilization of uh, filters on your platform that would suggest to young girls utilizing your platform the evidence that they are not good enough as they are. I want to ask more specifically and refer to some unredacted court documents that reveal that your own researchers uh, concluded that these face filters that mimic plastic surgery negatively impact youth mental health indeed uh, and well-being. Why should we believe? Why should we believe that because that you are going to do more to protect young women and young girls when it is that you give them the tools to affirm the self-hate that is spewed across your platforms? Why is it that we should believe that you are committed to doing anything more to keep our children safe? Sorry, there's a lot to unpack there. There we is give a lot. People tools to express themselves in different ways, and mm. people use face filters and different tools to make media and photos and videos that are fun or interesting um, across a lot of the different products that that that, that plastic are surgery pins are good tools to express creativity. Uh, Senator, I'm not speaking to Skin that lightening tools are tools Senator, to express I'm, I'm, creativity. This not, is the direct defending, thing that I'm asking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm not defending any specific one of those. I think that the ability to kind of filter and, um, and edit images is generally a useful tool for expression. For that specifically, I'm, I'm not familiar with the study that you're referring to, but we did make it so that we're not recommending this type of content to teams I, I made on, no, on no reference to a study, to court documents that revealed your knowledge of the impact of these types of filters on young people generally, young girls in particular. Senator, I, I disagree and, with that characterization. I, I think that there's there have been hypotheses. court documents? I, I'm, I haven't seen any document that oh, says Okay, that, Mr. But, Mr. Yeah. Zuckerberg, my, my time is up. Um, I hope that you hear what is being offered to you and are prepared to step up and do better. I know this Senate committee uh, is going to do our work to hold you in great to greater account. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Tillis. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Zuckerberg, let me start with you. Did I hear you say in your opening statement that there's no link between mental health and social media use? <laughs> Senator, what I said is I think it's important to look at the science. I know it's People widely talk about this as if that is something that's already been proven. And I think that the bulk of the scientific evidence does not support that. Well, really, let, let me just remind you of some of the science from your own company. Instagram studied the effect of your platform on teenagers. Let me just read you some quotes from the Wall Street Journal's report on this. Company researchers found that Instagram is harmful for a sizable percentage of teenagers, most notably teenage girls. Here's a quote from your own study, quote, we make body image issues worse for one in three teen girls. Here's another quote, teens blamed Instagram, this is your study, for increases in the rate of anxiety and depression. This reaction was unprompted and consistent across all groups. That's your study. Senator, we try to under, understand the, uh, the feedback and, and how people feel about the services. We can improve. Wait a minute, your, own, da your are... own study says that you make life worse for one in three teenage girls, you increase no, Senator, anxiety and depression. Says. That's what it says. And you're here testifying to us in public that there's no link. You've been doing this for years. For that's years, you've been coming in public and testifying under oath that there's absolutely no link. Your product is wonderful. The science is nascent, full speed ahead. While internally, you know full well your product is a disaster for teenagers. Senator, and yet you keep true. right on doing what you're doing. That's right? not true. That's not true. Let me, let, me t let me show you some other but facts I, mean, you, I know you, that you're you familiar carry, you with. I, well, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's, I mean, not that's, that's not a question. That's not a question. Those are facts, Mr. Zuckerberg. That's, that's not, not a question. That's, those aren't facts. Here, let me show you some more facts. Here are some, here's some information from a whistleblower who came before the Senate, testified under oath in public. He worked for you. He's a senior executive. Here's what he showed he found when he studied your products. 
So, for example, this is girls between the ages of 13 and 15 years old. 37% of them reported that they had been exposed to nudity on the platform, unwanted, in the last seven days. 24% said that they had experienced unwanted sexual advances they'd been propositioned in the last seven days. 17% said they had encountered self-harm content pushed at them in the last seven days. Now, I know you're familiar with these stats because he sent you an email where he lined it all out. I mean, we've got a copy of it right here. My question is, who did you fire for this? Who got fired because of that? Senator, we study all of this because it's important and we want to improve our services. Well, you just told and me I a second ago you studied it, but that there was no linkage. Who Senator, did you fire? You, yeah, I said you mischaracterized 37 percent of teenage girls between 13 and 15 were exposed to unwanted nudity in a week on Instagram. You knew about it. Who did you fire? Senator, this is why we're building all Who these did you fire? Tools. Senator, that's, I don't think that that's... Who did you fire? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to answer that. Because um, <laughs> <I mean, laughs> you didn't is, fire anybody, right? You didn't take Senator, any significant I, I action. It's appropriate to talk about... It, it, like it's not appropriate. Decisions in, Do you know who's like sitting that? behind you? You've got families from across the nation whose children are either severely harmed or gone, and you don't think it's appropriate to take a, talk about steps that you took? The fact that you didn't fire a single person? To, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Have you compensated any of the victims? Sorry? Have you compensated any of the victims? I, These I, girls, I, have you compensated them? I don't believe so. You, why not? Don't you think they deserve some compensation for what your platform has done? Help Senator, with counseling services? Help with dealing with the issues that your, your service has caused? Our, our job is to make sure that we build tools to help keep people safe. Are you going to platform. compensate them? Senator, our job and what we take seriously is making sure that we build industry-leading tools to find harmful to content, make money. take it off the services, uh, to make money. and to build tools that empower parents. So you didn't take any them. action. You that's didn't take any true, action. Senator. You didn't fire anybody. You haven't that's compensated not, a single not, victim. Let me ask you said. this. Let me ask you this. There's families of victims here today. Have you apologized to the victims? I, Would I'm, you like to do so now? Well, They're here. You're on national television. Would you like now to apologize to the victims who have been harmed by your product? Show them the pictures. Would you like to apologize for what you've done to these good people? I, I, I'm sorry for everything that you have all gone through. It's terrible. No one should have to go through the things that your families have, have suffered. And this is why we invest so much and are going to continue doing industry-leading efforts to, uh, to make sure that no one has to go through the types of things that your families have had to suffer. You know... Why, Mr. Zuckerberg, why should your company not be sued for this? Why is it that you can claim, you hide behind a liability shield, you can't be held accountable? Shouldn't you be held accountable personally? Will you take personal responsibility? Senator, I, I think I've already answered this. I mean, this is, these we'll are try this again. Will you take personal responsibility? Senator, I view my job and the job of our company as building the best tools that we can to keep our community safe. Well, you're failing at that. To, well, Senator, we're doing an industry-leading effort. We build AI oh, tools nonsense. that... Oh, nonsense. Your product is killing people. Will you personally commit to compensating the victims? You're a billionaire. Will you commit to compensating the victims? Will you set up a compensation fund Senator, with your money? I think these are... These are with your money. Senator, these are complicated yes, that, No, that, that's not a complicated I, I, question, though. That's Senator, a yes or no. Will you set up a victim's compensation fund with your money, the money you made on these families sitting behind you? Yes or no? Senator, I don't think that that's uh, my job is to Sounds make sure like a no. we good tools. My, my Sounds job like a is no. to make sure that we... your job is to be responsible for what your company has done. You've made billions of dollars on the people sitting behind them. Are you here? You've done nothing to help them. You've done nothing to compensate them. You've done nothing to put it right. You could do so here today, and you should. You should, Mr. Zuckerberg. Requesting for him, we'll Mr. Zuckerberg. Across all of Meta services, from Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, and Horizon, uh, how many minors use your applications? And of those minors, how many have a caretaker that has adopted the parental supervision tools that you offer? Sorry, I can follow up with the specific stats on that. Okay, it would be very helpful, not just for us to know, but for you to know as a leader of your company. Uh, and how, same question, how are you ensuring that uh, young people and their gardens are aware of the tools that you offer? Uh, we run pretty extensive ad campaigns, both on our platforms and outside. We work with creators and 
organizations like Girl Scouts to make sure that this is broadly, uh, uh, that there's broad awareness of the tools. Okay, 